Come in. Sir, Private Dingby reporting. My name's Dingby. Sir? Um, well, sir, I know the Emerson turret as well as anybody in the class. I know it perfectly. Really, I do. Only... What is it, Dingby? Well, sir, I didn't pass my oral. Oh. Well, it's not that I don't know it, sir. It's just that when I start to explain it, I get confused. See, I know it backwards. Maybe that's what we're afraid of. I mean, I know it backwards and forwards, sir. Do you think you'd get mixed up if you explained the torus to me? Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. You've got me in a good mood today, Dingby. One of my old boys is coming back. He's been making a swell show. I have a meeting before retreat. But you go back to the classroom and go over the torus. I'll be over in a half an hour and give you the oral myself. Well, thank you, sir. do it right this time. This time is for the captain. Oh, you don't know how important this is? You and I got to stick together. Well, I can. Got to pull together. Say, is Captain Stevens around? No, he's in a meeting. But he'll be by here in half an hour. Half an hour? Okay, I'll wait here for him. You don't mind, do you? Mm -hmm. But you'll have to excuse me. I'm busy. Hey, that's quite a contraption you've got there. This is the Emerson turret. Say, uh, Sarge. Sergeant, do you know anything about this thing? Well, I, uh... Good, you're just the man I'm looking for. Now, I flipped my oral, and the captain's going to give me another. Now, if I can explain this to somebody like you that doesn't know the first thing about it, well, I'll be a cinch. Oh, I get it. Well, I'm your man. And anything I can learn is just that much greater. Good. Now, you just take a grandstand seat and I'll plug her in. Okay. Shoot. Now, of course, if the turret were in a plane, I'd use a portable generator so I wouldn't run down the battery. But here, we have a permanent power supply. 24 to 28 volts, DC. Now, get a load of the way I get in. Got to know that. Now, first I turn on the main switch. Then I turn on the air of the switch. You'll hear the amplodynes go on. The main switch is just like the position of an automobile, except the current has three on Gee, I forgot you couldn't hear anything with that cupula and the amplodynes going. We never have it on when we explain things like this. Go oh, on, give me a hand. We'll take it off. You don't mind, do you? You've got a half an hour to wait anyway. I know. Gets here. We haven't got it buttoned on like it should be. Just a couple of screws hold it. You just take that one over there. Think you can get it all right? I'll try. First, we take the bearings all off. And when we get the screws all out, the cupola is clear. And we can lift the cupola right off. Okay. All right, now let's get going. You remember how I got in. Now first, I turn on the main switch. It's just like an automobile ignition, except that the turret has three of them. 
the main, and the azimuth, and the elevation. Now I turn on the azimuth. Now I've got to count ten before I turn on the elevation. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why the count of ten? Oh, I've got to do that because if I turned on all three switches at once, I'd overload the line. Now, this is a controller, just like an automobile steering wheel. In fact, when you get onto this thing, it's just like driving a car. You just do it by instinct. You don't have to think at all. When I grab hold of the controller, I automatically depress these safety switches. And when I move the controller to the right, the turret follows. And the farther I move it, the faster the turret goes. Same to the left. And when I return the control handle to neutral, the turret stops. Well, tell me if I'm going too fast for you. Well, sure, I'll turn it. Now, by tilting the control handle toward me, I make the guns go down. And by pushing them back, the guns go up. Now, I'll bring them back down again. And there we are. Hey, that's clever. Oh, that's nothing. I gotta know what really makes this thing tick. I gotta know how to take it apart and put it together. Yeah? Yeah. We've got one over here that's partly disassembled. It shows what really makes this thing tick. You know, when I wanted to be a gunner, I didn't know I had to be a mechanical engineer, too. Now we'll start from scratch. This is the foundation, the ring gear. It's the only part of the turret attached to the fuselage. And it supports the main frame, called the main structure assembly. This outboard and inboard casting set right on the main frame. Here we have the azimuth motor and drive. And it rotates the turret on the ring gear. See? We can get a better look at it from here. There's the motor. Drive. This is the gun cradle and the gun. Two 50 caliber guns are mounted in the cradle. You got to look at them in the other turret. This second motor and drive raises and lowers the gun. We call that the elevation motor and drive. Two motors. Isn't that complicated? Oh, no, that's simpler than if one motor were geared to operate both turret and gun. Now we have the ammunition boosters. These boosters lift the belts to the gun. We can get a better look at them in the other turret. You can spot them in here. Right there, right there. The gun charger handles are unusually convenient. There, over there. A hand drive is available to operate the turret in azimuth and elevation. This seat is adjustable, and the controller is attached to the front of the seat. The gun sight is mounted on the yoke and moves in harmony with the gun. Like this. See? The GSAP camera can be mounted beside the sight if desired. Now we go into the secondary tubular construction of the turret. This supports the entrance doors to the turret, the main switch box. It houses the switches, circuit breakers, and fuses, the bullet-resisting glass, and the oxygen assembly. And I'll show you now how you're protected in this thing. What's the red light for? What's the pilot light? What's it do? Well, when the pilot light's lit, that means the main circuit is closed and the turret is hot. Well, that's a good idea. If you're working on a turret, you can tell when the power is on. Yeah. Now, this bullet-resisting glass is for the gunner's protection. It has a hot air tube for low-temperature defrosting. And this drive moves the glass up and down with the guns and the gun sight, like this. See? Yep. Now. Oh. 
for additional protection, there's three slabs of armor plate. Here, here, and here. Uh, where's the ammunition for these guns? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. Over here. This ammunition supply and power pack is mounted in the fuselage. These ammunition boxes are just what the gunner ordered. 650 rounds for each gun. These two special motor generators, called amplodynes, supply a control source of current to the azimuth and the elevation motor. This junction box contains the relays and resistors for the electrical system. On it is this external power cutoff switch, wired down to be used only in case of emergency. And here also are two circuit breakers for the azimuth and the elevation power circuit. Hey, and this chute feeds the ammunition into the turret. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Now that I've explained the mechanism to you, how would you like to get in and try it yourself? Sure, I'd like to try it. Okay. Hop in. Now, don't be scared. Nothing's going to bite you. Just get comfortable. That seat is adjusted by disengaging the lever on the right-hand side. Now, let's turn on the switch. The azimuth. I'm glad you remembered to count ten. Now, grab the controller. We'll depress the safety switches. Now, these switches open and close every circuit in the turret, except the flying suit and extension light. Now, let's go to the right. Guns up. To the left. Guns down. Hey, right, that's good. Really? No, I'm not kidding. You do that okay. Now, this button on the controller is the high-speed button. It triples the speed of the turret. You use it to give the guns the gun and slew the turret around to track a new target. You see? Give it a whirl. Okay. Are you sure you never saw this turret before? I'm mechanically inclined. Brother, you sure are. You know, you've got talent. You'd make a pretty good gunner yourself. Thanks. Now, what if the power ever went off on you? Oh, well, that's what those hand controls I showed you are for. You see those clutch levers? These? Yes, release them and try it. Okay, Sergeant. Now put the turret back in gear for power operation. You push the levers forward until they're locked. That's it, and return the crank to the stow position. I'll show you about the sight now. Look into it. Can't see anything, can you? Well, first you have to depress one of the safety switches on the control handle. Which one? Either one makes the contact. That's it. Now to light the sight, you use this rheostat on the switch box. And to adjust the sight image to the light condition, you rotate the rheostat. See? Now, in very bright sunlight, this filter will cut down the glare of the sun just like dark glasses. It flips up and down. That's it. Yeah, I guess if that bulb burns out, you're really up to crick. Oh, no. That bulb has two filaments. If one burns out, you can use the other. Just change over like this. See? They sure thought of everything. They sure did. I'll show you about the guns now. To charge the guns, you pull all the way back on the gun charger handle. You see the dummy cartridge and clip is ejected each time. Now, did you notice that the bolt moves forward independently of the charger handle? Now, by pushing the charger safety latch pin into position and charging the gun, the bolt is held back and the cartridge is kept out of the firing chamber to prevent the gun cooking off. Now, to release the bolt, merely lift up on the safety latch pin. Now, the gun-firing solenoid circuit, here, 
is energized by the gun safety switch. And this safety cover prevents accidental firing of the gun. See? As you'd expect, the gun triggers are on the controller, around and back underneath your index finger. You got him? Yep. Now, either trigger fires both guns. See? Mm -hmm. But in case of power failure, you can fire the guns by stepping on the foot firing mechanism underneath your foot there. You got it? Now, in case you need extra light in the turret, this extension light reels out to any part of the turret. The connections for interphone mic and headphone are on the controller column. And this is the button for the mic. And the oxygen outlet is over here on top of the regulator. You can unclick it right there. That fits on the front of your mask. This light burns whenever the oxygen gets dangerously low. Naturally, it's burning now because there isn't any oxygen in the system at all. The connection for your heated flying suit is on the front of the tub right there on the right. Has a rheostat for heat control. Yep, I got it. Now, if you're flying in very high altitudes and your bullet-resisting glass gets fogged over, this defroster I showed you will clear the glass. And the hot air comes from an external heater. Now, if the glass becomes so damaged that you can't see through it, first you elevate the guns about 30 degrees above horizontal. That's it. And then, you pull these release handles. That's it, and shove the glass back over your head until it's locked in position. There. Now, when you get in, you can remove the damaged glass and replace it. Hop out and I'll show you. Now, you just release this catch at the back of the tubular support. Hang on, it's heavy. And slide the glass back and out. There, you see? Now, let's put it back. Now, come around in front, and we'll hook it up again. There. Now, one more thing. Suppose the turret were stopped so that you couldn't open the doors from inside the fuselage. I'll bite. Look at this. You see this cable? Yep. That's the emergency release cable. You pull it to disengage the azimuth clutch up inside the turret, and then you can crank the turret around in azimuth so that the doors are inside the fuselage. Like this. Pull the cable. Crank it around. Here we go. There. Well, I guess I've covered everything so far. What about keeping this thing in shape? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that. Before every flight, we give the turret a thorough checkup. A pre-flight. You have to know how to do that, too? Really? Just stay tuned in and you'll learn something. Now, first, I make sure that all the switches are off. Then I clear the ammunition chute by breaking the chute and pushing a cartridge out. simple enough. It's all simple if you know how. Now we've got to pull the belts back into the ammunition boxes. Like this. Here, you take this one, I'll handle the other one. There. Now we've got to go back in the turret and take what's left of the belts out of the ammunition boxes. First, I have to unlatch this movable armor plate. Locks into place. And lift up the gun cover and free the ammunition. Stice this someplace. Here's the other one. Close the gun cover. There. 
Now to clear the guns, I charge them. Not once, but twice. You notice that all duds, empty cases, and clips are ejected outside the turret. Now the guns are clear and safe. And with the belts out of the way, I can begin my operational test. First, I turn on the master switch. And the azimuth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the elevation switch. <clears throat> now there are electrical limit stops, which prevent the turret from rotating and the guns from elevating beyond predetermined limits. If the turret is turning so fast in azimuth that the electrical stops don't work, there are mechanical stops that check it. Now, let's swing the turret around and line it up straight ahead. There. In azimuth, the turret rotates 150 degrees, 75 in each direction. And it stops when the actuator under the tub hits the bracket on the airplane. And the limit rheostat acts as a dynamic brake. It's all very simple. Works like this. Same to the left. You see? Oh, you see? Yeah. Now, in elevation, the guns cover 60 degrees above horizontal and 50 degrees below. The elevation limit rheostat and actuator is mounted here on the right outboard casting. And the bracket is mounted here on the gun shield. Works like this. Bracket comes down, hits the actuator, stops the gun. All that happens is that the limit rheostat neutralizes the hand control. It's the same when you take them down. That bracket comes up, hits the actuator, stops the gun. There. Pretty neat, huh? Now I'm ready to show you how to take out the guns. But first, I have to explain something about the cupola. With the cupola on, this gun access door fits on here. And to remove the gun, you take off the door and slide the gun out here into the fuselage. You got it? Yep. Now, let's take off the right-hand gun. Now, rotate the turret so that the gun access door is inside the fuselage. And I have to line up the gun with the door. Turn off all the switches. Now, before I can take out the gun, I've got to disconnect the solenoid lead. And the foot-firing release mechanism. Use a cartridge to do that. The charger. And under this shield, there's a release handle. Now the gun's free. Give me a hand, will you, and we'll lift it out. There. Now the gun would slide right on out the access doors that I showed you in the cupola. Now we can put it back. Connect up the solenoid lean. Put the leech cable. Charger. Now I want to show you something. See this trunnion nut? Yeah. Now, as long as you take out the guns as we did, and don't disturb the nuts, when you put them back, you don't have to rebore sight the guns. Well, don't those nuts ever get loose? Well, anything's liable to get loose in an airplane, and if they do, you've got to rebore sight the guns. But these nuts are safety wired, and believe me, they're tight. Now, you can also strip the gun for cleaning inside the turret by removing this foot firing release cable and the back plate like this. 
Now I'm ready to check the firing solenoid and the foot firing mechanism. All right, turn on the gun firing switch. And I hold down on one of the safety switches. And I press each trigger separately to be sure that both triggers fire both solenoids. I'll try the right one first. It's okay. It's left. It's okay. Now I'll check the sight. Hey, uh, what about the foot firing mechanism? Oh, yeah. Well, you have to check it the same way. Yep, the firing keys work okay. Now I'll check the sight. Turn on the rheostat. See, that works okay. Yep. Check the filaments of the lamp. If one of them was burned out, I'd have to replace it. I make sure that the sight is mounted securely. If it wasn't, I'd have to harmonize it with the gun. And now I check the ammunition boosters. Okay, and now I'm ready to load the ammunition. Turn on the switches. One, two. Oh, I've got to line up the turret straight ahead. Eight, nine, ten. And I have to elevate the gun so I can lift up this movable armor plate, like we did before. Lock it up. Now. When you load these ammunition boxes, you have to be sure that the rounds are in there pointed out this way. See them in there? Like that. And you also have to be sure that the double loop end of the clip goes through the chute first. Like this. See? Now these extra sections that we took out a minute ago will be hooked onto the end of the belt later. Place them down there. Now let's load the belt into the chute. You shove the belts right on down the chute with the distributor under the tub. Now this is a loading belt. I'll show you how to use it in a minute. First, I gotta hook up those chutes that I disconnected. Now, I take this open end of the loading belt and I feed it down through the chute to the distributor under the tub. And you get down there and hook it onto the first round and I'll pull it up through. You understand? Right. Okay. Ought to be coming down the chute. You got it? I got it. Take it away. Now, take off the belt. Get the ammunition through the booster. Pick up the gun cover. Get the ammunition into the gun. Slick, isn't it? You're not kidding. Now let's really slap this other one together and I'll show you how fast we can do it. Right. Belt's coming down. I got it. Pull her up. Here she comes. Bring it over the booster. Put it over here. Thanks. The end of the gun. No, I can't understand how you catch on to this so fast. Now I've got to put down the movable armor plate. You know, you mustn't forget to do that, because if you don't, when you depress the guns, you'll jimmy up the sight. Now let's give her a little trial spin. And there she is. Ready, willing, and able. Hey! 
Hello, Captain. Oh, great to see you. When did you pull in? Just a little while ago. Cargo plane. Well, come on into the office. What are you doing in here? I've just learned how to work the Emerson turret. You just learned how... Oh, Dingby. He's pretty sharp at this thing. Showed me how it works from the bottom up. Yes, sir. He knows it cold. Well, Sergeant ought to know. He knocked down 17 planes with one of those turrets. 17 planes? Seventeen planes? Oh, gee, I'm sorry. I didn't... I mean... Oh, skip it. You could do the same thing yourself. And probably will. Okay, Dingby. If you're good enough for Jordan, you're good enough for me. You've passed your oral. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks. Don't mention it. Say, there's one more thing on that pre-flight you were doing. A little house cleaning. Clean the reflector plate and filter. That's right. A speck of dirt in that site might spell a miss. Nice baby, we did it! Mm -hmm.